everyone. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Yeah. We come to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can somebody open their mouth and say hallelujah? Can you give God a praise? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. To him alone is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy.
are renewed every day, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you look on this service tonight, Lord. Meet the need of everyone that's here tonight, Lord. Touch the speaker on tonight. Give them what to say, Lord. Hallelujah. Send the word today, Lord. We will pick what we need, Lord, to be healed, to make home, Lord. Look on our pastor, Lord, the first lady of this church, Lord. A second pastor, his wife, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Give them what to do to lead the people on today, Lord. We thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
the way I'm back. But as I was trying to get here, I left my glasses as far as I can't see. And a clock on the dresser fell and knocked me on my head. I got this great big bump up that I can't let you see. Hallelujah. It was around the grave for me on today. It was just so much going on in my life. I said, okay, now you got to go now. I got to go. In the name of Jesus. I had to get this here. I prayed to God for our superintendent. And I used to say that by on my head. I said, the greatest superintendent on this side. Get it together. 
but he knows how to get us together. He knows how to break us down where we want, where he needs us to be. We need to get back, and it's in that scripture on the Potter's Hill. We need to get back. Call the brokenness. Now, we are broken, and sometimes it's not our fault. Sometimes people can break you. They can make you broken, but we need to get back on the wheel. We don't need to be bent all out of shape, but we need to ask God to help us, to mold us, to make us, and fix us. Because the scripture uh, says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Colossians 1, 45 says, he is the image of the invisible God. God created man in his own image. Everything about God is good. He created us, regardless of how spiritual we think we are. Everybody ain't spiritual. You can holler, scream, and jump, and flip, and do all that you want to. But see, those with the Holy Ghost know that you ain't done for putting on, but keep on doing it, because you'll get it one day. We are under construction. We were not always where we are. I'm standing up here, and I don't stand up here and throw no stones. I don't know you. I don't go to your church or nothing. But I'm so glad, because I, I get what the Lord gave me. I have to give to you. You are not always where you are today or where you are going. There are a lot of mistakes in our lives. A lot of us are messed up. I'm messed up sometimes. I, I say messed up, but I know how to get it straight. I know how to get down on my knees and ask God to fix me because I don't want to be lost. I don't want to leave this earth because I don't know when I'm going to leave this earth, but I don't want to leave this earth unfixed and unfixable. We can't just walk around with those noses turned up, or turn a deaf ear to someone who has a problem. We have a lot of problems in the church, and these problems are really real. People need us. We got to be able, even if we can't do it, a lot of times you so say, well, they need some money, maybe so, but you may not have it, but you know how to tell them something and make them feel good, or show them how to get it. That's somebody struggling on tonight. This is the term of time that we're going through, saints. Many of the saints, y'all, many of the people, period, have lost their jobs. They don't know where the next meal is coming from. That stimulus package is gone. So they got to look to Jesus, who's the author and finisher of their faith. On the hidden side of every Christian is a sign saying, God at work. He's not through with you yet. That's a consolation. We need to keep that in our hearts and our minds. I know mean, he ain't through. He ain't through with me yet. I say that all the time. See, I want to make straight path for my feet. He ain't through with me. I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes. But the part of who crafts a vessel has the vision to get us back and fix us where we should be. Before you and I can perceive the will of God, we must be able to perceive a will of God. Where are you headed? Are you going right, left? Which section are you headed to? What are you lacking in? You got to know those things in order to ask God to fix it and do you in. Do you in? Because some of you need to be done out. Potter's pit is where the potter receives his clay. That's, and when you're dealing with the clay and a whip, that's some slick walls that you have to deal with. We are wretched and undone. I'm telling you, saints, don't let us walk around like we got we gotta show love one to another, and maybe that's what's missing in the, the trying time. We don't show love like we should. You know, if God will come tonight, are you ready to go? Is there anybody that you didn't show love that tried to come to you with anything? He's going to get away now. All of those kind of things that's not godly, we got to ask God to give, strengthen us and give us that love that we need. We're in the mighty play at the bottom at the very bottom of the pit. I'm teaching y'all, that's it. I got a bad throat. And the, the darkness at the pit, dark, it's dark down there. Some of us are going through the darkest days of our lives. The potter will pick up that clay, though. See, he knows what you're going through. He knows what you're dealing with. He can pick you up, turn you around. Whatever is out there puffed up, he can snatch it back in. That ain't right. It ain't fixed right. I need a vessel that I can trust. I need somebody I can put on that pedestal and show this is my child. I need to be proud of you. How many of us can say, I believe he's proud of me because I go to church every Sunday. I go to church every night, every this and that and the other. Is that all that he's requiring of you? 
He sees the clay with potential to be a vessel of honor. He can use that. He can brag on us. Do y'all think he can brag on you right now? Maybe so. But if you do, keep it like that. He can't stay in no backbiting. And don't think that you're going to get there on, the, on, on his side being a backbiter, being a liar, being a cheater, conniving, hypocritical. That's just junk. God is in the junk collecting business. You got junk all on you and everything. He's in that business. Let him take it off of you. Let him throw it in the trash where it should be. God said, give me some clay. Turn you into what you need to be. Give me that clay, I'll put you on that wheel. I'll bring treasures out of trash. I'll make jewels out of junk. I'll make glory out of that garbage. I'll bring riches from rubbish. I'll make diamonds in that debris. I'll make righteousness in, out of that riffraff. I'll, I'll make worship out of waste. I'll make deliverance from the drug addict. All right. I'll bring him to deliverance. I'll give praises to the prostitute. They, they, can, they can praise him too. He can deliver them. Amen. And I can bring hallelujah to the homosexual. God builds his church on a bunch of misfits and throw away. See, you, you look at people in church sometimes, you say, I remember when. God, oh, that man ain't coming to church. Oh, look, dirty, God, the dirty clothes, dirty socks, doing all this and hollering up. You look at it. But God can build a church on those kind of people. Amen. He had a puzzle that you don't fit. Let every man examine himself. Give me a murderer like Moses. I'll turn him into a liberator. All right. Give me a captive like Daniel. I'll make him a prayer warrior. Amen. Give him shepherd boy like David. I'll make him a king. Child like Jeremiah. I'll make him a prophet. A fisherman like Peter. I'll make him an apostle. Give me a tax collector like Bartia. I'll make him a disciple. Give him a person to me like Paul. I'll make him a preacher. Give him a prostitute like Mary, Magdalene. Make her a faithful housekeeper. Give me an adulterer like the woman at the well. I'll make her an evangelist. All I need is a piece of clay. Hallelujah. See, we were wretched and undone one time. Oh, nothing but dirt. But what did he do? He cleaned us up. He cleaned us up and made us whatever you think that you are on today. And if you think you got room to give him even the glory, give him some more and improve, seek him the Lord. Because we're not where we should be on tonight. So. And you know what? I'll make her an evangelist. All I need is a piece of clay. And you know what I need to fast and pray. Because you're not going to get there if you're not fasting. If you're not praying. You've got to do that. As a part of molding or shape a clay pot on the potter's wheel, deficits often appear. Now even if he does it, deficits are going to come. You ain't going to be fixed for you and me. Cracked all up on one side. You can be busted up on another. You're not even going to shine up on another. But you get back on that wheel. Glory. Huh? You get back on the wheel and he knows how to perfect you. Just do what he asks you to do. There are deficits. The potter has the power over clay to permit deficit or remake or reshape the pot. Likewise, God has power to reshape us to conform to his purpose. Our strategy should be willing and responsive to God. As we yield to God, he begins reshaping us into that valuable vessel that he can use. He can't use everybody. You got to have the heart fixed. You got to have your mind fixed and regulated. He'll bring that joy back down into the soul. Somebody needs to get back on the wheel. Lost your hope along the way. And you can't be ashamed to tell people, I need prayer. We got broken along the way. We need mending along the way. Church folks don't look or act the same anymore. You think they turn you down, but you got to get strong. Get strong in the Lord. And speak to them anyway. And hug them anyway. I love you anyway. God, you're not fast, and we're not 
stop praying. I look at sometimes the young people and I said, we better get busy. What time we have left? We're coming on the west side of the mountain. Our young people are gonna need us right now to carry on this church. Because if we don't get with them, I don't know what the church is gonna look like. Amen. We have an ugly way of speaking to people. Jealousy, thank y'all, where that come from? Attitude need adjusted. We don't shout no more. We lost our legs. We don't have that joy. We don't praise him anymore like we used to. Then we go dress him like everything we want to dress like. Everything, and I'm not even going to get on that because we know. Church of God and Christ in the saints, we know how to look. We know how to act. So when you put that kind of stuff on, you know what you're doing. You're lying, we're cheating, and we're stealing. Teaching the children, the teenagers, we got to teach them. Mother's not teaching the young, because the young children will let you out and say, come here, come here, right? You know, the young, young children. We need to be cleaned up, saints. Broken, shine, we got the children, we got to get that children off of us. We need to be turned on the wheel. We need to be turned until our hands look new. That's how we do it. Those things that you used to do, you don't do it no more. The things that you, you need to do, you need to start doing it now. The burdens will be lifted once you start doing those things that God requires you to do. Yeah. Your feet going to look good because you are not trying to the places that you are not supposed to go. We know we ain't supposed to go everywhere. We know that we were taught not to go over there and play those uh, slot machines and all that kind of stuff. I ain't even sitting on liquor house or something. We know where we're supposed to be. We know we're supposed to love everybody. We know that our hearts we need to love until our hearts get full. Just love them. And we know that we need to love everybody. I was broken one day, a wretched and undone. I told you to bother because my throat is my thing. I was broken one day. Really broken. But I was broken just to be broken. Because I was just so, I, 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 was, I don't know what it was, but I wasn't satisfied. I wasn't satisfied with nothing. I wasn't happy with anything. I didn't know why I wasn't happy. This was way back in the day. I didn't know that, uh, that, I didn't know just going to church was it. I wasn't happy. And I didn't know I was crying day and night. Until that one day, I had to get down on my knees for myself. I didn't know what I was gonna say when I got down there. That was my early days. But when I got down on my knees, and pray to the Father. I didn't get up until those big old tears came rolling down my face. I was so happy. And it looked like when I looked out the window, the leaves started dancing. You know, they were just going from place to place. I said, Lord, the leaves started dancing. I thank God for what he did for me. And I have never been the same. I haven't taken back any of those things I used to. No, I'm not perfect. I say some things that I shouldn't say, but I know how to get down on my knees. You know, I don't want to go out and did you see her? Because he, he don't need no superstar. No. I'm telling you, not a superstar. Yeah. I said, God, I don't want to be super. I just want to, I just want to love you. Yeah. I just want to praise you. I just want to be one of your servants, oh God. Use me, oh God, for your service. In the name of Jesus, that's the prayer that I pray now. And the prayer I accept from other people. When she called me and prayed for me today, y'all just don't know how that burden lifted up off of me. I said that that a clock almost knocked my head off. Hallelujah. But when she prayed and prayed and prayed, and that big knock started going down and everything. I said, Thank you, Jesus. That it could have killed me or something. I thank God for going through in the name of Jesus. I asked God to put me on that wheel because I have some, I got some stuff on me. I know it is. I may mean, not know what it is, but I'd be glad if somebody tell me. So, James, you you just ain't acting like you, you used to. Do it because I don't want to be lost. I don't want to be lost in this evil day. I want the Lord to be pleased with me. And if he put me on that wheel, on that part of the field, I want him to say, well done, God, good and faithful servant. Because we're, we're getting older. We don't know that they're going to be ours. 
I tell you, this Corona thing, and said it didn't owe the people. I said, oh, what the heck? <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, the Lord said it's the old people than us. Thank you, Jesus. And the underlying problem that I have, I said, Lord, clean me up. Make me and mold me the way that you want me to be. I said, if there is anybody in here that I have offended. Now, I can't offend over the word because this is the word of God. But things that I say, say in the word. Hallelujah. If the things that I say, you know, that ain't changing or nothing, making that up and all that, then you come to me. Because I don't want to be lost. I want the power to mold me and I think it needs to squeeze me. Squeeze me. I want him to do it just like that. Hallelujah. Because he's good. He's great. And he's ready to be praised. Y'all yes, yes. pray for me. I told you I needed five minutes. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all pray, pray that the will of the Lord will be done in my life. Thank you, Jesus. You don't know what will happen once you leave this church. But there are many people in here tonight are going to come and 